Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing, Lord. Give us direction. Lead us, lead us, lead us, lead us, Holy Spirit. Lead and guide us. Yes, Lord. Oh, Randio Sabre Divine. Bido Frandies Calavon Jivai Kuridivain Divai. Oh, we just worship, we just worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, give us direction. Open our hearts today. Speak to us through your word. Use my hands, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my feet, Lord, to go where you want me to go, to say what you want me to say, to do what you want me to do. Use us, Lord. Use us. Use our hands, our eyes, our mouths, our ears, our feet. Send us, Lord. Send us, send us, send us. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Mando kuridi vasi Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mando kuradavalevin. Praise the Lord. Let's go to um, the book in um, Let's go to Galatians 5:22. The Bible in Romans chapter 8 it says Those who are led by the Spirit are the sons and the daughters of God. The sons and the daughters of God it says that in Romans chapter 8. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5:22. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. We've had a long service today, but hang out with me for a few more moments. We're going to get into this word. Um, I may bring a few people in here and we'll be at capacity. May wake some of you guys up in the morning and bring you in here to, to help run some of this uh, online feed before we officially open. Galatians chapter 5. Praise the Lord. Those who are led by the Spirit are the sons and the daughters of God. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Thank you for that, Lane. Goodness. Faithfulness gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law. Now, we read this scripture on Wednesday, but I'm going to read this in the context of what we're talking about today. I want to talk about being led, being led. What are you being led by? And um, how many know that your body has a language your spirit has a language and your soul has a language. Your body has a language. Your spirit has a language. Your soul has a language. Many things are speaking to us. We have communication throughout our day through many things speaking to us. There are things designed to lead us in life. And your body wants to lead you in health. But because of the curse of the law, often our body is bent on leading us into uh, destruction, and leading us into deterioration, leading us the our bodies are bent on leading us to into death because of the curse. Okay, so your body will will often 
leads you in the opposite direction. So you don't want to be body led. But there are some signals, there's some communication from our body to us throughout the day that when it's in balance, it's good for you. My stomach's rumbling, I'm hungry. My head hurts. Um, you know, my, my head hurts. I need to deal with that. Your body signals to you when you feel pain. Don't touch the fire. It's hot. Your body's signaling to you. I'm cold. I need to turn on the heat. I'm hot. I need to turn on the AC. Your body's talking to you. It's signaling to you. It's speaking to you. It's letting you know that uh, what it needs. It's letting you know what you need to do. And when it's in balance, those things work. Sometimes we're off balance and many of those things aren't working like um, they need to. And your soul will signal to you. Your soul speaks a few languages. It speaks the language of emotions. It speaks the language of our, of, of, of our thoughts. And your soul will signal to you often what your soul needs or what your soul wants. And your spirit will signal to you. Your spirit will endeavor to lead you. When your spirit is connected. When your spirit's connected to the Holy Spirit, your spirit will lead you by the spirit of God. It will lead you to life. It will lead you to blessing. It will lead you in faith. Your spirit ultimately is, is supposed to be leading every other function of you. Your spirit is supposed to be the leader of your body and your soul. So when you get saved, often God has to start to turn that thing around. And as you mature, your spirit becomes stronger than your body and your soul. But when you're weak and you're, you're not mature enough yet, your body is leading you outside of your spirit and your soul is leading you and you're just being led by the handles of everything else. And God wants to lead you. So your spirit needs to take the ascendant seat in your life. Your spirit needs to be the one that's leading you. So throughout our day, throughout your week or whatever you're going, whatever goes on, there's certain things that signal to us that are natural, that tell us a direction to go, that incline us to look this way or look that way or go that way. That's how God intends to lead us as well through different avenues. But often there's a system that's in place that's working. As we're maturing, God desires to put a system in place that's working in his kingdom. But often God is working with us through this system. I call it the bit and bridle system. If you read in Psalms 32, verse 8, Psalms 32, verse 8, it says, I'm just going to read it to you guys real quick. It says, I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing and guiding you along the pathway of your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. So don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn. When I take you where you've not been before, don't make me tug you and pull you along. And when we read that in another um, translation, it will say, don't make me lead you as with bit and bridle like a horse. As in bit and bridle like a horse. What is God saying? There's certain handles that God is forced to move you by when you're not tuned into the spirit to be led by him in those ways. So often the handles of God are often God will have to move you with these other handles 
He'll have to force you into position and God wants to lead you by the spirit. And we read those fruits of the spirit and those fruits of the spirit is how God endeavors to lead you. He endeavors to lead you by love. He endeavors to lead you by peace. He endeavors to lead you by joy, to lead you by faith, to lead you by wisdom, to lead you through revelation, to lead you through humility, to lead you through the understanding of the kingdom of God, to lead you through honor. These are all leadings of the spirit. These are all leadings of the spirit. So those fruits of the spirit in Galatians are also indicators and leadings of the spirit. So I have a list of some things that we can find that lead our lives. Love, peace, joy, faith, wisdom, revelation, humility, understanding, and honor. God endeavors to lead you by these things. As you're going throughout your day, pay attention to those things. God can lead you by those things. God wants to lead us. He wants to lead and, and guide us. So there's also the world around us that's pressing in on us. And often God uses the pressure to squeeze us into position. Often the pressures of life, um, they're often pressing in on us in this world. And instead of allowing the pressures of life to crush us, those pressures can be a source that pushes us into position. When you understand how God works, Hallelujah. Think about a fish in water. Now there's a fish in water and in the water, there's pressure. I'm going to help somebody today. In the water, there's pressure pressing on that fish. But ultimately, that fish needs the water to hold it up. It needs the pressure of that water to contain its system. That fish has a system. It has bowels, it has organs, it has a system that needs the pressure of the water to, to contain it. And it breathes in that water. And that water is uh, filtered through that fish's system and it's part of its life. It's part of it sustaining life. It needs that water. When you take that fish out of water, not only um, does it lose its natu the, the, um, the natural pressure of its environment, but it also loses the water that it needs for its system to be sustained because the, the fish was designed to live in water. The fish was designed to live in water. We are living in the waters of the world. And God said that he wants us to live, um, to not be of the world, but he needs us to live in the world because we have something that the world needs. So the pressures of life are pushing on us. I have news for you. You were designed, God designed you to withstand and be sustained amidst the pressures of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the Lord is showing me a virus, and this is a good example of what happens when we're thrown off balance in our circumstances and our situation. So the Lord is showing me a virus, and a virus turns against the natural order of a system and begins to fight against that system. So there's enemies that get involved, that fight against the natural order of the system that God has set in place for your development, come on, for your maturing and for your growth in the spirit. 
God wants to grow your gift. He wants to mature your gift. Thank you, Lord. He wants to grow you as a Christian, as a believer, as a, as a prophet, as a pastor, as an evangelist, whatever he's calling you into. He wants to grow you. So he's allowed some pressures. You need those pressures. You need those pressures. We need those pressures to sustain our gift. And God has created a system as a believer to sustain and grow your, your gift. You become like that fish in the water where now you're in the water, but you need that system. You need that, that pressure system. The Bible says all things work together for the good of those who are called according to their purpose. And the minute that you enter into called and purpose, a new system comes into play. And that pressure is pressing on you. And uh, we have to be careful not to fight against the system. I'll give you an example. The Lord said to me once, Michael, you're going to experience offense throughout your life. You're always going to experience offense. Offense. O-F-F-E-N-C-E. -F -F -E -E. You're going to experience offense. And he said, you're going to experience rejection. You're going to experience fear. Those are all spiritual. In the soulish realm, you're going to experience stress. You're going to experience negative emotions. That's in the soulish realm. You're always going to experience that. As long as you live in this world, you're going to experience that. In the body, you're going to experience pain. You're going to experience discomfort. You're always going to experience those things. As long as you live in this world, there'll never be a time where you're not experiencing those things. They're a part of life and your development on every level. So pain and discomfort in the body communicates to you. What does it do? It helps you get into the position for health. How many know you, you can't discern your health if you don't recognize pain and discomfort properly? In the soulless realm, you won't ever understand yourself if you can't discern and recognize your emotions and where they're coming from. How many know there's negative emotions and there's positive emotions and there's necessary emotions? Your emotions will help you understand yourself better. And when you submit your emotions to God, he will help you become more developed in Christ, in that arena, in your life. And in the spirit, same thing. All those things that we listed in the spirit, rejection, offense, fear. He said you will experience those things. And here's the catch. Here's the catch that I want you guys to get as we close out. You will experience them, but you don't have to become them. You don't have to embody them. God said to me, offense is okay. Just don't get offended. There will be people around you who exude offense, and you can feel that from them. Offense often will try to come your way, but don't get offended. 
The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. We don't have a spirit of fear. We don't have to take fear, accept fear, but we will experience it. Sometimes fear in the natural is a caution, letting you know, hey, don't go down that road. Same thing in the spirit. Somebody's going to get some breakthrough today. What am I saying? I'm trying to say, learn to discern the world around you, just like that fish discerns the water and recognizes the need for that water. The fish learns how to use the water to get where it needs to go. It swims. God wants us to learn how to swim in the pressures of this life. There's things that he's allowed around you that's for you, that's for your development. So he's saying, don't get offended at the offense. Don't become rejected at the rejection. And don't become afraid of the fear. You're always going to feel fear. You're going to feel fear. Don't become it. Don't take in fear. People are going to reject you. Don't become rejected. Don't obtain a spirit of rejection. And people are going to offend you, but don't become offended. All these things are opportunities to take on that spirit. You can take on a spirit of offense, you can take on a spirit of fear, and you can take on a spirit of rejection all at once. And you can allow those things to lead you. But really, they're indicators. You know, when I get a high, when I get a, 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 an expensive bill come in the office and I'm looking, I'm like, man, how am I going to pay this? There's some stress there. The healthy stress says, pay this soon so that light doesn't get cut off. The lights don't get cut off. Pay that soon so the lights don't get cut off. I feel that. That's stress. It's a healthy stress. Why? Because um, it's going to lead me to make sure I take that to pay that on time. Now, the minute I start worrying, getting afraid, then it becomes an unhealthy stress. What am I doing? I'm taking on and I'm embodying what was meant to be an indicator and a leading to my management of the finances. Same thing in the spirit. God said often, Offense can be a fence. It can be an indicator. You can feel a you can feel um, a block or a check there, and pay attention to that. And when you lift it up in prayer to the Lord, when you pray about those things, praying about what you're feeling, praying about what you're experiencing, praying about what's coming in your direction. Sometimes God is trying to get your attention. And what the enemy does is he comes in and he throws off the balance. He causes us to work against the system that God instituted to lead and guide you. The pressure is there for you. The Bible says humility comes before honor. Often, right before God is about to bless you, right before there's about to be a breakthrough, you're squeezed into a tight place because God is trying to get you somewhere and it's working for you. It's not working against you. But if you're not careful, Paul calls it kicking at the pricks. There were things that were set in place to protect you and to guide you. God said to me once, often the rejection was protection. You begin to see those things that are in place for you and you begin to recognize them and you can properly discern 
how God is guiding you in this season. So I'm going to pray for us. We're going to talk a little bit more about this because we want to make sure that we're paying attention to what we're feeling, what we're experiencing. The Bible says, casting all of our cares upon the Lord and bringing every thought into captivity. What does that mean? It means everything has a source. Everything has a source and everything is endeavoring to take us somewhere. We want to ask the Lord to reveal to us the things that he's placed there for us, how he's leading and guide us, what we need to pay attention to, and where certain things are coming from. Where are those thoughts coming from? Where are those ideas coming from? What's endeavoring to lead you? There's a check, there's a hole, there's a block there, there's a door there. God's going to open some of those doors. God's going to keep some of those doors closed for you. Praise the Lord. We want to be led by the Spirit. Father God, I pray that you would give us wisdom, give us direction, give us discretion, help us to discern what you're saying, what you're calling us to do, where you're leading us, Lord. Reveal to us our mission. Help us, Lord God, to discern what you're saying to us, to, to discern the language of every part of our member in jesus almighty name we pray and we thank you lord help us lord give us wisdom in jesus almighty name we come against every enemy that is trying to throw confusion into our camp we rebuke you satan and we thank you lord god for your guidance holy spirit be our guide lead us into the place of blessing lead us into the place of breakthrough in jesus almighty name we pray Amen and amen. God bless you guys.